Hello and welcome to this uh, short presentation on studying Russian in Trinity College Dublin as part of the Trinity College Virtual Open Day. My name is Justin Doherty. I am one of the lecturing staff in the Department of Russian and Slavonic Studies in Trinity College. The Department of Russian and Slavonic Studies in Trinity is actually the only centre of Russian and Slavonic Studies in uh, the Republic of Ireland, in fact on the island of Ireland altogether. So we have a, a, a unique uh, role to play in this area uh, in promoting uh, study of, of Russian and other languages, cultures from the, the Slavic Slavonic language family uh, on the island of Ireland, as well as um, Russian, which is our, our core uh, activity and, and area of expertise. We also have uh, colleagues in the department whose uh, areas of specialism cover the languages, literatures, history and culture of uh, Central and Eastern Europe more widely with expertise in um, as well as Russian, Bulgarian, um, Czech, Polish, Croatian, and also um, in the uh, history and culture of, of Hungary. So you might be wondering uh, why um, Russian could be a, an interesting and useful thing to study. Um, you might uh, have a background in uh, the Russian Russian language. It could be the language uh, your family speak, uh, or it could be that you're just curious to know more. And um, if you are and you have a flair for languages, then Russian is a very rewarding and interesting um, language to take. Um, it's an important language in a uh, global and European context, um, spoken as a as a first or, or uh, second language by um, so more than two hundred million people around the world. Most of uh, those people um, in the Russian Federation itself, but uh, throughout uh, the countries of the the former Soviet Union and. Um, through people emigrating um, in the modern kind of global world, pre-COVID world anyway. Um, the Russian has been, been brought uh, to, to many countries all around the world. Um, according to uh, European Commission information, Russian is the fifth most commonly spoken second language uh, across the EU. Over 30 million EU citizens uh, are speakers of Russian as a first or second language. So it's, it's an important language in, in the broader European context, as well as clearly being the, the dominant language in the Russian Federation itself. Uh, in terms of what Russian is like as a language, it belongs in the same Indo-European language family as English and Irish and all, all of the other. Um, prominent uh, European languages people may have studied at secondary level, French, German, Spanish, Italian and so on. Uh, the grammar of Russian is a bit different from English, but there is much uh, in common. There is much common vocabulary and common, common roots of words. You can see on the screen here, uh, Russian has its own writing system, its own alphabet, the so-called Cyrillic. Uh, Russian version of the Cyrillic alphabet, uh, which sometimes seems a bit of a daunting thing to new learners of the language, but it really um, is the least uh, of anybody's worries. It just takes a few a few days to get your head around and get used to it, and uh, you're up and running very quickly. So, um, you know, while it's it's possibly for some people an unfamiliar language. It's not exotic and remote um, in, in any way. It's, it's a very um, approachable language for, for 
people who, whose first language is another European language. Uh, we also need to mention the fact that Russia um, has a very rich and interesting cultural legacy, um, a very rich and interesting history. Um, given that Russia stands between East and West, between Europe and Asia, it has um, characteristics in some ways of, of, of both of those, those um, dominant worlds. It has one of the world's great modern literatures. People might be, might be aware of names like Dostoevsky, Tolstoy, Chekhov, Turgenev, Pushkin. You can go on for a long time. Um, there are many more, more uh, literary treasures to discover. Uh, it has a very rich musical and artistic legacy. People are probably um, aware of uh, things like the, the Russian ballet tradition, uh, which has been widely exported around the world, but many other aspects of, of uh, the cultural legacy are, are worth exploring. Um, Russia has a very fascinating recent history with uh, the revolutions of 1917, the uh, establishment of a communist system, uh, the Second World War, the collapse of communism in more recent times, the uh, the way in which Russia has changed as a, as a society in post-Soviet times, uh, adapted to, to uh, globalization and, and other things. Um, outside of uh, COVID restrictions anyway, um, these things have created um, enormous opportunities for, for people to, to work and study and travel uh, in Russia and um, other former Soviet states, and so people graduating with a degree in Russian have have all kinds of opportunities to to travel and and work in in Russia and, and other post-Soviet countries. So uh, the nitty gritty of how you study Russian in Trinity, um, the first uh, pathway is the joint honors pathway, where Russian can be combined with one other subject. Uh, these are uh, the subjects that currently can be combined with Russian. So most of the other languages and other arts, humanities disciplines. Uh, Russian also participates in three combined degree programs. First of all, European studies, where two languages are studied in parallel alongside humanities disciplines and then in their third year students specialize in one of those languages that becomes their major language they spend a year um, on an approved program in a country of that language and then graduate with with a major in in that language so russian if it's if it's russian it's the major language uh, similarly with business studies and a language uh, that program is two-thirds business, one-third language, just one language is taken. Again, it has the third year integrated uh, study abroad year uh, at, a, at a partner institution for Russian. It's uh, the University of St. Petersburg. And then the third combined degree program where, where Russian has a presence is the Middle Eastern and European language and cultures degree. So students take one European language, one Middle Eastern language in parallel uh, so when Russian is the is the cho chosen language that also allows for um, study abroad uh, in Russia for one semester of the third year and then study in the relevant Middle Eastern uh, country um, for the second semester of that, that third year abroad. So those, those programs all have the integrated year abroad as a feature uh, in the third year of the four years of study. So going back to the joint honours pathways, just to explain, I'm sure people will already know a little bit about this, but there are um, numerous different um, variants of the joint honours pathway, which uh, depends on how much of one of your two subjects you study um, as you progress through the years. So um, 
we have the possibility of a, a pure joint degree where each subject is equal right the way through. That's option four on this page. We have the option of uh, turning your joint pathway into a single honours degree uh, where you would drop your second subject in years three and four um, and specialise in just one of your joint subjects in your final two years. It gives you a single honours degree. Uh, just to say that if that uh, single honours subject is Russian, um, that opens up the possibility of studying um, a second Slavonic language as part of your Russian pathway. So for the years three and four, you could be studying Polish, Croatian or Bulgarian uh, as part of your degree. So that, that's an interesting kind of, uh, variant. Um, so the, the other uh, routes are uh, numbers two and three here, major with minor, where the balance is slightly different. It's more in one subject. The other has a smaller presence, but it's still uh, maintained right the way through the degree. So say you're studying Russian and English, um, you can major in English, minor Russian, or major in Russian with minor English, and that affects how, m how many credits in each of those subjects you're taking in your third and fourth years. So that's the joint honours pathway, so it's uh, more straightforward than it perhaps looks on paper. Um, and the, the advantage of this one is that you can, you can come in as a joint, um, on the joint pathway and then see how you get on with your two subjects and if you feel more um, comfortable or find one more rewarding than the other then you can balance the degree uh, as suits you best. So you might then be asking yourself uh, what you can do with a degree in Russian and I think here the, the key thing to emphasize other than this being a route into working in um, the, the sort of Russian speaking world in some some form or other, whether that's kind of based based um, here in Ireland or somewhere somewhere else outside of Russia, but with a with a link up with Russia, or whether that's actually based over there, people have have found all kinds of um, interesting employment routes doing both of those things. Who, you know, amongst recent recent graduates from our department. But typical career pathways that uh, open up to, to people who have um, a language degree um, would be uh, working in, I won't read these out, out uh, in turn, but first of all, arts and media would be a, a, a well-trodden pathway. Business and finance, especially, but not exclusively for people who've taken the the business studies in Russian degree, um, civil service, public service and international organisations of different kinds, uh, both official and um, uh, NGO type organisations are, are a popular career pathway and then finally education. Um, the Russian isn't commonly um, studied in, at secondary level in, in Irish schools, that, that's becoming a little more widespread than it, than it was once upon a time. Um, but uh, education in one capacity or other is, is, a, is a pathway, particularly people with a joint language degree. Um, so uh, I think it's worth emphasizing, and, and, and other people will, will say the same thing, that Having a, a degree in any arts humanities area from a university like Trinity will open open doors, particularly if you if you come out with a, with a strong result. Um, you've shown yourself to have lots of what we call transferable skills um, in things like you know being being good communicators, being able to to process information and and present. Uh, of digested forms of things in an effective way to give give presentations to persuade to argue uh, to um, research uh, effectively all of those skills are things that you'll acquire as as a, a an arts humanities student and then with with a subject like Russian you have the added advantage of um, foreign language skills which is a, 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 a 
skill which is highly highly prized by by many employers so uh, I'll just finish by saying in Russian спасибо за внимание thanks for listening and 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 watching and um, please do feel free to to uh, talk to um, people from the department who will be available on um, the the day itself for for contact um, virtually and hope to to meet some of you through that route thanks mm -hmm.